sponsored in part by dollarseed.com for your flowers vegetables and herbs all organic seeds all only a dollar a pack dollarseed.com and by willsprings.soap.com handmade soaps with simple recognizable ingredients making soaps using the cold kettle process while using traditional methods willsprings.soap.com minority.com authentic haven brand 100% natural soil conditioner for the home garden for all your vegetables herbs and flowers minority.com always free shipping squirm and worm farm organic farm and gardening supplies it's conveniently located in plymouth wisconsin worm castings organic potting soil organic and heirloom seeds cover crop seeds and more squirmandwormfarm.com Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. I'm Joey Barrett. We're in the strawberry patch today. It's September. We're not picking strawberries, but we're maintaining the bed and we're getting the runners off that we started a few weeks ago, the daughter plants, so we can transplant them into the, to extend the strawberry patch here as well as take them to other locations. These are some of the strawberry plants, uh, some of the daughter plants that I harvested a week ago. Now, I went ahead and put them in these cups for two reasons. One, because I wasn't sure if we are going to put them in this uh, strawberry patch here or we are going to take them to the sister-in-law's backyard. And the second reason I did it was so I could see if they would take. There's no more disappointment than to take uh, the daughter plants that you think are going to establish, put them in the bed, make it look real nice, and then come back and for whatever reason they don't take. There's going to be some that are not going to take. But I've got a good variety here. I think I've got about 15 plants. Uh, that, that, that took, here's one that didn't take. I'm not going to take the chance of putting that in the ground because it is wilted for whatever reason it didn't take. I've got a couple of little tiny baby ones that have come up. So we're going to plant those and see how those develop. And I tried an experiment with taking a mature daughter plant, leaving the runner onto another daughter plant, putting it in two separate cups. And that seems to have worked very successfully. So we're going to try that again when we take more of them out of the strawberry patch. This one here, I've got one good leaf. I've got more leaves developing, so that one's good. And I'm really pleased with the way they have bounced back from putting them in the cups. They were shocked initially, but that's uh, that worked out real well. So what we've got here, we used to have defined rows a couple of years back with this strawberry patch. So with the runners, uh, each each uh, mother plant can put off three to seven runners based on the variety and the health of that mother plant. Now, for those who may not understand what runners are, runners are the vines that come off of the main plant. Here's a nice runner here that we will uh, eventually do something with. This one goes all the way back to that plant there, and it has got several daughter plants. It's decent, got some decent root growth on them. And that's where we are getting the propagation from the strawberries. Now you can start strawberries from seed, but the disadvantage to that is it takes some time. And if you take the seeds from the strawberry you buy at the store or if you get commercially from somewhere, it can be a hybrid and it can potentially not produce as true to the mother plant. These will produce as about as true to the mother plant as you can get. Now for those who are wondering how many seeds are on a little strawberry that you get at the store, there's approximately 200 and for all your strawberry information there's a great website that we found called strawberryplants.org that will be placed in the show notes if you have any questions or a lot of frequently asked questions that you may have that that website can answer so our next step here is going to be doing what we did here with these plants here we take soil put in the cups and then we go ahead I want to get about 20 started we started 17 last week and I think we only lost about three so it worked out real well so I want to get some more established and then we can maneuver them in the garden now I know what you're thinking you've always been told if you plant the strawberries from sets that you get from the local home and garden center or online in the spring you got to pinch the buds off that first year and it's a very unsettling thing to do and that will help build up the plant so it produces better the second year by doing the propagation in the fall, you do not have to do that in the spring. If you plant these in the, in the fall now, they will produce berries in the spring and you don't have to punch, uh, pick the buds off. So it will work real well. And you can get a lot of berry plants off of these. And we're going to first find some that have established themselves in the soil that we put our little metal clips on a couple of uh, weeks ago, at about a month, four to, four to six weeks ago. We're going to get those snipped off and get it in the cups. And then we're going to find more daughter plants that are that have got a good root base. We're not going to snip them off and put them in cups yet. We're going to get them in some loose soil. 
and let them get established for about another week and then we'll come back next week and do the same thing again and again until it gets too cold and we'll let these set in the cups we're going to plant these today the ones we harvest today we'll let set in the cup for cups for a week we'll replant those and then these you can put in containers in the ground however you want to go about uh however you want to go about planting them whether you take them put them on your property or give them to friends and family so let's let me get in there and we will find some that's got a good root establishment snip, snip them. them from the mother plant and put them in the cups so here is where you can see our little white clips little metal clips that i put in about four to six weeks ago now the way you can tell if the strawberry daughter plant has rooted simply grasp the plant the entire plant and just give a slight tug if it resists, then obviously we have roots that's been established. So, what I will do first, I'm going to take my metal clip, and that's just a little uh, piece of hanger. And you can check out the link in the show notes for how we go to go about doing that. I am going to take my trowel, and I'm going to loosen the soil around the roots, doing the least amount of damage. I just want. To Try to take as much soil up with it as possible just so it doesn't stress the plant out too much. Alright. Now, here is the umbilical cord to the mother plant, which is here. I'm going to snip it off at the daughter plant. And then also I'm going to go back to the mother plant and snip it off as well. That encourages the mother plant to focus on getting ready for next year. Otherwise, that umbilical cord is still attached to the mother plant. It's going to assume that there's still a runner or a daughter plant out there and it's going to continue to try to focus more on getting the offspring healthy than focusing on the health of the actual mother plant. So we'll get, let's see, this one has a daughter plant, no, nope. this one had a daughter plant and that's where, that was the extension of its cistri. We're just going to cut that off there. Now these discoloring of the leaves, when you go on the strawberryplant.strawberryplant.org website, it gives you a listing of all the diseases that a plant can have. So I am just going to, this could be some form of a blight, I'm just going to get rid of that leaf there so I have a good a healthy establishment. And there's some more diseased a little bit there, but I'm okay with that. So we're going to, you can see all the roots here that is established with that daughter plant. So it's got a good root de root development. So we might need to do something a little different. Uh, let's see if we can get it all in that cup. Yeah, I'm just gonna set it all in that cup. And this is just normal, ordinary potting mix that I've got, since they're just gonna stay in for about a week. Tap it in. And there we have a very beautiful daughter plant that we're gonna let sit in there for about a week just to make sure it does take and it gets established and then we can put it in this garden. We, the ideal is to expand this tr strawberry patch to double the size in the next year to two years. So that's a beautiful little plant. And again, propagating these strawberry plants, it's free. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to wait for them to come in the mail. And it's a great way to expand your strawberry bed with very little to no cost. So I'm going to get a few more of these taken out and then we'll head over there and we'll plant the ones that we got propagated from last week. We're going to put them in the ground and kind of start establishing that end of the strawberry patch. I've got 18 planted. i got two more to go here. Now there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you are extracting your daughter plants out of your raised or out of your strawberry patch. If you can leave as much soil on the roots as you possibly can because that's going to really lessen the stress and the shock that the plant will go through. And we'll just put it in the cup, put some soil over top of it, push it down firm. Now, for instance, on this one, it was just one root. So obviously not a whole lot of soil came uh, with that one. So we're just going ahead and plant it as well. <clears throat> the chances of that one, chance of this one making it, not as great as the one with all the soil on it. But ne nevertheless, we're going to uh, go about uh, putting them here, seeing if they'll take and then we'll planting them next week. So I've got 20 here planted. We're going to head over to the other side and take the ones that we had planted last week and put those in. Now, if you didn't go out in your strawberry patch four to six weeks ago and, and pinch the runners to the ground so they would root, don't worry about it. There will be runners that will attach themselves to the soil 
naturally. So you can find those and you can extract those and move them to another plant. Once you know they're established after you cut them from the mother plant. Strawberries like it a little more acidic than other vegetables. So what we've got, we got our soil tester here, just a very inexpensive one. And we're looking at about a 7-2, which would be good if we're planting, you know, tomatoes or peppers or something on this end. So we want to bring the acidity level down a little bit. And you can do that by adding some coffee, cold coffee will do that. We're going to use some sulfur tablets that you can get from your local home and garden center for a relatively inexpensive price. And on the back of the bag, it will identify the rate per square foot. So we're just going to spread it out where we're, the berries are going to be planted. We're going to do three rows here. We're going to do three rows. We're going to have to work around our butternut squash here, which is fine because at the end of the season, that will be, that'll come out. And so I'm just going to do a handful each row and extend it outward because this bed appears to be a little on the neutral side or at a 7.0. So these will break down over time and it'll help bring the level of acidity down a little bit. Okay, so let's get planting our strawberries here. We'll start on this side. Now you want them to be planted Oh, I'm going to go about every 8 to 12 inches for the berry plants so they can have plenty of room to develop and then also when they put off runners we can ex take the runners like we are here mm -hmm. and we can continue the bed for years to come. So when planting a strawberry plant there is a crown on the strawberry plant. Let's see if I can pull it out, okay. That being the crown, kind of where all the leaves come out of the root system, you want that to be flush with the soil. If you plant that too deep, the plant will suffocate and the plant will die. So you, you can't bury it too deep. It's not like tomatoes where you can just bury it all the way down. You want to plant it right up to the crown and it'll be fine. So we'll get it right to the crown, pack the soil around it, and there we go. Our first strawberry plant of the new bed here. So we'll do this with all of them. Now when every time you're planting from daughter plants, again if you see a bad leaf just go ahead and get rid of it and we'll get these in the ground and we'll begin the start of a new strawberry patch. Now we're doing this so we can have more strawberries and propagate the plants time and time again. Fruit trees are a great addition to your property, whether you grow them in a container in a dwarf variety or you have the availability to plant them in the ground and start a mini orchard. This is our pear tree and it's been here as long as we've been here and from what research we've done, nobody's quite certain how it got here or when it was planted. But we do know one thing about the variety of this pear tree. It doesn't need another tree to pollinate it. When purchasing pear trees in this instance, you want to be very aware of the variety because some of pear trees need two trees to pollinate. This tree could pollinate one of those other trees, but again, it doesn't need another tree for pollination. Again, with the variety, there are some pear trees out there that do not bear fruit, but they bear flowers throughout the summer. That is your opinion. If you want to purchase a tree simply for the beauty, I would prefer to purchase a tree for the sustainable fruit that it provides. What can you, what, what upkeep do you need to do on a pear tree? I look at it as if the tree was in the woods. Would there be any upkeep on the tree in the woods? No, and that's the same life that this tree holds. Nobody comes around and prunes it or takes care of it. We simply allow it to grow, bear its fruit, and then we harvest it in the fall. What can you do with the pears that you harvested? Well, there's an endless variety of things that we do with pears that you'll be able to see on a upcoming Canning What You Grow series. From making pear butter, to pear sauce, to pear honey, to canning the pears, to pear pie filling, to pear juice, and an endless amount of other things. Can you take a seed and plant it directly in a pot and get it to grow? Yes, but it can be very difficult. My recommendations would be going to the home and garden center and get one that is grafted and then plant the rootstock that way. There's an old proverb that says, blessed is the man who plants a tree but never sees it grow. So if you have the space, I encourage you to plant a pear tree to continue the sustainable fruit for generations to come. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe and comment 
We put out this particular video each and every Tuesday with a variety of other videos throughout the week. I'm Joy Barrett and this has been a Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. For more information, you can visit the website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.